Good afternoon from the Valley of Jezreel, from the Armageddon Valley. I'm here next to a, uh, a farm owned by uh, one of the locals here that graciously allowed me to use his, his ground for this event. I had uh, my son taking horseback lessons not far from here and I knew I'm never going to make it back on time to my house. Not to mention that the house is full of uh, kids and uh, noise and I thought it'll be nice to show you this beautiful backdrop behind. So um, again, shalom and welcome everyone. This is Amir Tsalfati and again, I'm so excited. We just had the most awesome seven, eight days with 50 young adults from six different continents, from 15 different countries. The Lord showed up in a mighty way and I'm telling you guys if you want God to touch your the heart of your your young adult in your house any if you have a someone who attends college um, university this is the right place this is the land of God that there's people of God where there's the Word of God and 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 God is just showing up in a remarkable way here it's amazing to leave them 50 of them and to see that they're praying for one another they, they are singing and praising God in ways that you know it's hard to see young adults nowadays in the world doing that the Lord touched their hearts in such an amazing way and also the Lord spoke to me throughout this tour that behold Israel is to invest what way more in the young adults around the world we believe in in reaching the the four corners of this world with the gospel of Jesus and with the understanding of the events here in Israel and I'm telling you we're planning next year two buses and the year after five buses and I'm going to put a lot of effort in expanding the young adults branch of this ministry and if you're a parent and you're you're concerned about what college is doing to your child there is nothing better than sending him him or sending her over here to um, a, a good concentrated dose of Bible and current events to send them back home on fire. So I'm, I'm telling you, stay in touch with us. This is going to be great. Also, I want to tell you, a lot of you um, were for the longest time asking where can we get the Behold Israel hat and the Behold Israel shirt and the Behold Israel jacket. Behold Israel is a non-profit organization. We do not have stores and we do not sell things apart from resources such as uh, teaching material. However, we managed to convince the supplier that gives us, or w the one we buy from, to open a web page where you guys can actually buy the Behold Israel logo products, those mer the merchandise. And uh, he actually was very excited about it. He said, guys, I'm going to sell it and I will donate to the ministry a certain percentage. So, you know, we're, we're not going to sell you anything. There is going to be an online store. It's BeholdIsraelStore.com and you can buy that uh, over there. Um, they are shipping it to all over the world. What they do, they accumulate within two weeks the orders and they close the store temporarily so they can fulfill those shipments and they open it again. So if you're interested, that's a good way, A, to get those products, B, to support the ministry. We are not those who sell things, nor do we operate this website. We're just we're just happy that we could finally find a solution for this and since you asked we found it we have a lot to talk about today um it started with this morning a few hours ago the israeli military started a surprise um military drill in northern israel assimilating a, a war in northern israel not far away from here we're talking about a, a drill that is following uh, a, the Air Force drill that took place uh, a couple days ago. Israel is dwelling in safety and peace, but Israel is preparing for war. We've been talking about it for the longest time. This is the calm before the storm, but we can see the storm approaching. We can see those dark clouds coming. They're not here yet. We see them in the horizon, though. We are making the effort to be able to um, pre be prepared uh, whenever it happens. 
We also hear the, of the, um, the latest development of um, an Israeli missile um, that is uh, capable of reaching precisely the target from about a hundred miles away. In other words, uh, it can be attached to an airplane. The airplane doesn't have to fly all the way to that target. He can just release the, tar the, uh, the missile a uh, hundred miles away. And the missile is not only equipped with a GPS, but also with more layers of systems that cannot let the GPS be wrong. And it can hit almost literally any target. Israel's Air Force is about to buy those from the Israeli military um, industry. And it's going to be uh, something quite amazing. This is one of those uh, things that Israel is engaging in, in doing right now in order to prepare for something big in the future. Also, just so you know, the Hamas uh, uh, had a colossal failure over the past weekend. They were hoping to, um, re to get 50,000 to 100,000 people to come to the fence and to breach the fence and infiltrate into Israeli territory and, and execute some terrorist actions. And um, eventually, um, less than 10,000 people showed up. Not even a single attempt to breach the fence uh, was successful. And if anything, they were hoping for a high number of casualties so they can cry to the world that Israel is massacring their people. And there was only five, four casualties over the weekend, and they were hoping for 40. It's, it's sad to say, but they're, they're happier when there's higher number of casualties. But only four people died, and they're quite um, disturbed by it. We are watching something very interesting. The Hamas in Gaza is not even listening to his own people. He's listening to Iran. They admit that they uh, received $250 per person to bring them to demonstrate and to execute some terrorist attacks from Iran. They, in other words, they, reach, they, they, they have millions of dollars coming all the way from Iran, and they, they are paying $250 dollars per person, which is, by the way, more than a monthly salary for, for the Gazans. And yet, even with all of that bribery that the Iranians are trying to flood Gaza with, very few people showed up. People are so tired of this. The Hamas also admitted that they are in touch with Iran and Hezbollah on daily basis. They, are, they have become a proxy of Iran. Um, and, but I want to make it very clear, we do not want to destroy Hamas at the moment because it serves our interests that they rule their own people. Israel's last wish is to enter into Gaza, populated by two million Muslims, and to try to rule over them once again. So on one hand, we want to destroy military infrastructures, but on the other hand, we want to leave them right there ruling their own people, because at the moment, there is no better alternative. Um, and so that's basically it. The situation across the border with Jordan is quite troubling right now. Let me explain what happened. Jordan was flooded with um, immigrants or with uh, refugees coming from Iraq on one side and Syria on the other side. Jordan borders both with Iraq and Syria. And the war in Iraq and later on the war in Syria brought millions of immigrants into the Jordanian territory. Um, they have no plans on returning to Iraq or Syria. They are now settling in Jordan. Jordan's population uh, basically is now 11 million, uh, of which 4 million are just refugees. It's so heavy on the Jordanian economy that anyway is being artificially kept alive uh, with support of America and Saudi Arabia. The problem began when the Jordanian king started flirting with Iran and Turkey. And when the Saudis saw that, the Saudis immediately cut all the support to the Jordanians. The Jordanians uh, le were left without their main oxygen pipe. And the Jordanians decided uh, to go to the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, and to ask them for a loan. Well, the IMF said, we will gladly give you a loan, but we, you need to, stand, uh, you, to, to, to uh, have certain standards, such as raise the taxes, raise the interest, and uh, show us that you can pay us back. The Jordanian king uh, 
decided to raise the taxes, raise the interest, and the furious people of the kingdom showed him that there are limitations here. Demonstrations all across Jordan started in the smaller and the bigger cities, and for the first time, they didn't have any problem publicly coming against the monarch and his wife and against their the way they spend money and they waste money and, and their corruption. And the Jordanian king realized that his days could be numbered if he's not going to do something about it. Israel wants the king to stay there. Um, and so what happened, he fired his government, he, he, he fired his prime minister with the hope that things will subside. But apparently it's not really happening. And the Jordanian king is really troubled. And because of that, the Jordanian king decided uh, eventually to run back to the arms of Saudi Arabia. And the Saudis taught him a lesson. The Saudis said, if you want our money, you cannot go and, and flirt with Iran, our biggest enemy, or with the Hezbollah, or with Turkey, of course. So the, uh, the Saudis just announced a special um, conference in Saudi Arabia to, to somehow bring an end to the crisis in Jordan. And f once again, Jordan is on the right side of the moderate and not the extremist, on the side of the Sunnis and not of the Shiites. So, you know, it fits biblically what we can see, that the, the Jordanians are not going to turn against us. It fits biblically what the Bible say, that, um, that the, the attack that Ezekiel is seeing is not including uh, uh, Jordan, if anything, um, Saudi is going to rebuke those who come against Israel and invade into the land in order to plunder and take booty and, and, and take the spoils of war. So everything fits perfectly to the biblical description of a prophet from 2800 years ago. The Chancellor of uh, Austria, um, Adrian Kurz, uh, Sebastian Kurz, excuse me, just landed in Israel a few hours ago. Uh, the youngest European leader, 31 years old, the leader of the conservative, conservative party in Austria. Believe it or not, um, he is a very pro-Israel leader. Um, when I gave my message on the possible rise of the Antichrist from Western Europe, I don't know if you ever saw that, it's called Europe closer to the Antichrist. I, I, I showed a pattern of how the Europeans are going uh, uh, and voting for younger and younger and younger leaders, uh, for the most part, without even families or children. And Sebastian Kurz is the youngest of all of them. Um, it's very interesting because he's very concerned with the immigration of Muslims into his country. And as of uh, last week, he actually shut down nine different mosques across Austria and kicked out all of their imams. One of those mosques was a Turkish one, and the Sultan Erdogan is angry at the Austrians for doing that. But you can see uh, the, the seeds of rebellion in, Aus in, in, in not only Austria, but all across Europe against the expansion of Islam and the terrorism that Islamic, um, uh, radical Islam is sowing all across. Germany is still in a state of, uh, I, 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 can, I don't even know how to call it, it's a retarded administration. That the only thing I can say, they watch and see their country falling apart. And they, instead of fixing it, they make it worse and worse. And this is exactly why President Trump who just left the G7 and landed a couple hours ago in Singapore, he definitely showed the Germans who the boss is. Angela Merkel published a picture in which she's standing and angry at President Trump and he's sitting with his arms locked like that. And Angela Merkel thought that this picture will be a picture that will show the Germans how much she stands on the truth and this guy is just a stubborn guy without knowing it actually proved the opposite it, it proved how blind she is and how determined president trump is not to allow the german expansion all across europe and domination in the eu to uh, dictate his moves germany literally is the landlord of the eu 
and then comes France and and it's interesting how Macron and Angela Merkel uh, both right now agree on on creating a 10 European nations alliance that will create a joint European defense force. There's something that should cause every Christian to think what's going on here because the prophet Daniel spoke of the Antichrist rising and, and he described that beast that has 10 horns and out of which one who is the Antichrist is going to come out. Um, so the crumbling and falling and, and completely uh, divided European Union is going to produce something different, is going to produce something uh, um, more militant and in, 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 in counterbalance to uh, the American, uh, the American um, policy right now. Erdogan has never been in a greater trouble than he is right now. He actually called for early elections thinking that it serves his interest. Little did he know that the Turkish lira is going to drop to almost half of its value. Great depression, economic depression in the country. And the latest poll shows that he may not even pass the first round of elections. He doesn't even have 50% to move to the second round. And if the opposition is going to pull together all its forces, uh, they might even beat him. I don't think it's going to happen. I think that he's, with his back to the wall, is going to pull some, some sort of a trick. Uh, but I do know one thing. I know that uh, you see that the man is determined more than ever before to do something desperate in order to bring himself to be more relevant. And I know that, as always, Jerusalem and Israel are the easiest way to unite the Muslims and to show that you are a good, devout one that you can um, rule everything. Um, the Russians are in a growing tension with the Iranians and the Hezbollah. The Russians just told the Iranians and the Hezbollah, you must clear southern Syria. You must clear the area of the Syrian Golan Heights. Um, and it's interesting because the Iranians, uh, what they do, as they always do, they, they deceive the Russians. And how do they do that? They take away their soldiers, then they put on them uh, the uniform of a Syrian army, and then they send them back as if they are Syrian military. The Hezbollah is doing the same thing uh, in their area. And Hassan Nasrallah, the leader of the Hezbollah, said, we will only leave Syria if the Syrian president will ask us to do so. So we, we, we can see that um, a lot is going on in Syria right now, and seeing and watching this tension may be the reason why Israel is not operating at the moment, because at the moment, instead of the Iranians entrenching themselves in Syria, they are in the process of, of packing and leaving parts of Syria, as they should. Netanyahu kept saying uh, in his latest visit to Europe, and he actually got the, probably for the first time, uh, some support for something that he says, all of the European leaders that he talked to, whether it's Macron and Merkel or Theresa May, they all agree that Iran must leave Syria. So that's quite an achievement for the Israeli Prime Minister. I also want you um, to know that in Iran, the situation is amazing. Amazing. The Iranians are demonstrating in the streets of almost every city. The, the Iranian economy is just literally falling apart. Even their soccer team just received the news today that Nike will not give them or sell them shoes for the coming World Cup uh, uh, series in, um, in uh, Russia. They, they don't even have soccer shoes now uh, to, to play with. They're very, very angry. Nike doesn't want to you know, make President Trump angry and to mess up with the American administration. And so we can see the, the Iranians are now angrier than ever. The Ayatollahs are not really doing well right now. Once again, they are with their back to the wall, just like Erdogan is, and you know that it can only produce bad things. I can also tell you that I just saw a video of how they, 
they made, uh, you know, they always want their children and their youth to hate Israel and America. So what they did, they painted the Israeli and the American flags on the floor of uh, the courtyard of the school. So when, when the kids come out of school, they are supposed to step on the Israeli and the American flags. Um, we, are, we are getting videos of children that are leaving school and they bypass those flags. They are not buying this whole propaganda. They don't want to step on America on Israel's uh, flags. They, they understand this is not for them. It's very interesting to see how the Iranians are just tired of their own regime. The Prime Minister of Israel today released on, on, on his Twitter account a short video in which he said, we understand there's a growing drought in Iran and in the next few years 50 million Iranians will have to just move and leave somewhere else because of the complete uh, dry um, area they're in. And so uh, Netanyahu said, guys, we're going to help you. We don't hate the Iranians. We will help you uh, to learn how to recycle um, uh, wastewater. Israel uh, recycled 90% of its wastewater and we can help you. The Israeli uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs posted and created a whole web page in Farsi where we give the Iranian people instructions of how they can actually purify their own water. And Netanyahu said something very interesting. He said, the Iranian regime is shouting death to Israel. Israel is shouting life to the Iranian people. We may have problems with the Iranian regime, but we love the Iranian people. We want them to live. We want them to succeed. We believe that they were taken hostage by their own um, regime, and we have nothing against the Iranian people themselves. We have everything against their terrible regime. The immigration into Europe is now starting all over again. It's, this is the season. Summer had begun. Thousands of thousands of immigrants are now flocking into um, into um, a um, into uh, Europe, and the Europeans are just looking for a deliverer. Let's talk for a few minutes on the summit between Trump and Kim Jong Un in Singapore in the coming couple days. President Trump, a couple hours ago, just landed. Kim Jong-un landed a few hours earlier. It's very interesting. From the moment the news broke that there will be a summit, both the Russians and the Syrians pledged to meet with the North Korean leader immediately and talk to him about something. Let me tell you something. The, 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 the Syrian president, apart from leaving to Russia to speak to Putin, never left Syria. And he's actually looking forward to going to Pyongyang to North Korea. Why? You need to ask yourself why. And I will tell you that in 2007, when Israel destroyed the nuclear reactor of Syria in the Deir Azur town in the desert, it was a North Korean nuclear reactor. And I'm just wondering, are we going to see the North Koreans trying to smuggle nuclear devices into Syria in order to clean themselves and denuclearize themselves? Are we watching a way for them to not get rid of it, but to actually sell it? Um, is that going to cause Israel to destroy Damascus? I'm just raising some questions. Because why would the Syrian president of all people would want immediately to meet with the North Korean leader? This is going to be interesting how a summit in one part of the world may affect the fate of the Mediterranean area and the Middle East. And, and of course, if you really study well, if you really study well the Ezekiel War, it is a non-conventional weapon that is being used there. And I have no problem seeing tactical nuclear weapon or biological or chemical weapon being used because the Bible des describes how, how many uh, months and years that weapon has to be buried. And when the Bible describes the type of injuries and, and the type of 
fatalities and how all of that happens, it is evidence that it is definitely something powerful. And so I'm just, I'm just going to look very carefully on, on what's going on there and see if indeed the Russians are going to broker for a big chunk of money a deal that will give the Syrians some of the nuclear weapon that North Korea has today. Um, that's it, folks. Uh, we covered uh, most of our bases. I, I think you understand that we're in unbelievable times. And I think you understand that parallel to what is going on in the world, we see God is doing great things. And me leading the tour of, of, of 50 young adults gave me, renewed my vision for, for this age group. And uh, the Lord gave me that verse that this is the age group that is going to turn the world upside down. And I believe that all of you, all of you know that God has many people in your city. And I believe that in this, this young generation, this young generation can be won back to Christ if we, if we invest in them. And I want, to, I want to encourage all of you to consider sending them with us to Israel, to behold Israel, not just to have fun, but to, to get Bible studies, to see the land for themselves, to worship the Lord right there where things happen, and to go back home with, 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 with the truth, with, with unfiltered truth. They, they can see for themselves the things that the media is lying to them all about all the time. So I'm planning next year a two-bus tour of young adults that will include for the first time the Red Sea and Petra in Jordan. And if you're interested in sending your son or daughter or maybe both of them, uh, let us know as soon as possible and because we are limiting it to two buses. I'm planning for the year after five buses. And I'm planning for the year after that, if we're still here, uh, twice a year, five buses. I am going to put a lot of effort and a lot of time invested in that age group. Folks, we talked about the North Korean uh, and the American summit. We talked about the G7 summit. We talked about um, how the Europeans are shocked at what Trump just did in the G7. I mean, he literally came, he showed up, and he said, stop the hypocrisy. The tariffs that you guys put on American products are not going to be a one-sided. If you guys want fair, fair economy and fair trade, either you drop everything or we raise, we raise ours, but we are no longer going to finance your stupidity. Um, they're shocked. Trudeau is shocked. Merkel is shocked. Macron is shocked. And because they know they really need the American economy. They know that it's nothing is going to work without it. And they understand that that eight years of, of, of romance they had with the previous president came to an end. A new sheriff is in town and he's not buying their shenanigans. He's not letting them abuse and use the American people. And having said all of that, I want to remind you that the President Trump's slogan as he ran for president is make America great again, not make the whole world great again. He's, uh, he's literally investing his effort in recovering the American economy, which is in a great shape right now, recovering the American uh, administration and, and, and military and all of that. But remember, 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 remember. And I'm not saying that against anyone. I'm just saying Israel understand that this type of policy is basically leaving us to take care of ourselves. We will for sure be supported by America if we will have to do something, but if we will have to do something, we will have to do it all by ourselves. We understand that. All we need is, the, is, is that no one on, on, on in the White House is going to stop us from having to do what we need to do. And for eight years, we've been trying to put an end to the Iranian nuclear program. We had enough plans to, to, to do something there. And President Obama did not allow us to do anything. Maybe it's too late to attack Iran in Iran, 
but it's not too late to make sure that they're not going to make it in Syria. And that is exactly what we're doing right now. So uh, keep in touch with us. Um, we're watching unbelievable things happening. And um, uh, keep praying, folks. Keep praying because we are definitely experiencing the calm, but we can see the storm. Definitely can see the storm. So again, once again, for those of you who didn't watch the beginning, um, I just wanted to know that um, um, many of you have been asking about our merchandise, our hats and t-shirts and jackets. We're a non-profit organization. We do not sell stuff. Uh, but we convince our supplier to open a website for our followers so that he can sell them um, and operate that website himself. And in, in return, he also pledged to give the ministry a certain percentage as a donation. So it's beholdisraelstore.com where you can get those things. They are collecting all the orders for two weeks and then they stop taking orders for two weeks in order to fulfill and ship all of them to all over the world. You can, you can just order it from anywhere around the world, but they're not having a big stock there. They will have to take the orders, stop, send them off, and then take orders once again. Thank you again, guys, for listening to this short update. Um, I'm very excited about what's going on here. I'm taking off to Europe the day after tomorrow. I'm going to be in Austria, um, and I'm going to be in Romania. First time, both places, to preach and to teach in large churches, and I would appreciate your prayers while I'm there. This uh, summer, in the coming month and a half, I'm going to be uh, or in the coming two and a half months, I'm going to be in 10 different countries. Uh, we're done with the tour season until October, and I'll, I'll be busy traveling around the world and teaching um, people in 10 different countries over the past two and a half months. So I would appreciate your prayers. So uh, let's finish up with the ironic blessing, and then we can wrap it up. Yevarechecha Adonai v'yishmerecha Ya'er Adonai pana velecha v'yichuneka Yisa Adonai pana velecha v'yasem lecha shalom May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine His face toward you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance towards you and give you peace. Shalom. That peace that surpasses all understanding. The peace that only the Lord of Peace and the Prince of Peace can give. And that's the peace that He can give now and forever and everywhere. And I pray that in the midst of all that is going on, you will find your peace in Him because He is our peace. Thank you and God bless you from the Valley of Armageddon, from the Jezreel Valley, right here, back to you. Thank you and God bless and Shalom. Bye-bye.